Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you all for coming. So uh, my name is Omar. I'm, a, I'm on the kernel team at Meta, where I spend most of my time on Dragon now, in addition to using Dragon to debug our production issues. So it's, it's been nice having both sides of the development and then using my own thing and then uh, having that feedback loop. Uh, so this is going to be what I'm hoping that this will be is more of a, a brainstorming session for how to add this feature of, of being able to write to memory and the related feature of being able to do breakpoints. And in particular, how we could do this in production, as crazy as it sounds. So since there are, there are some people in the audience who aren't uh, familiar with Dragon, I'll do a very brief introduction. Uh, I've given talks before where I've gone deep into it, but uh, this will be a, a more pared down version of that. Um, then I'm going to get everyone on the same page about what I mean by memory writing and breakpoints, and in particular, justify why we want to do this in production. Uh, and then the, the the main thing I'm hoping to get through is come up with some ideas for both the mechanism for how we would do this and the API, make it make it friendly enough, but also uh, not so dangerous in the sense that you won't accidentally do something that you didn't mean to do. So. Uh, Dragon is what I call a programmable debugger. Uh, so the idea is instead of having like a built-in commands, uh, it gives you some building blocks. So representations of, of variables or types or stack traces from the program. And then you can use those building blocks to, to make fancier stuff on top of that. So for example, we have a, a big library of kernel specific helpers, which are basically functions that are built on top of the Dragon core uh, that implement uh, ways to get information about specific kernel subsystems, uh, whether it's finding task structs or walking through uh, slab caches, stuff like that. Um, and then on top of those helpers, you can you can have uh, your interactive debugging sessions be fairly complex, walk through a lot of different data structures as you're trying to figure out how everything fits together. Uh, and uh, another really nice part of this is you can then pull all of that stuff that you did manually and save it in a script so you can reuse it the next time you run into a similar problem. Um, and you can also share those scripts with others as kind of a, a information sharing learning experience type thing. So I'll, I'll do a brief demo. How legible is that? Cool. So um, this is just on a, a VM I have. Uh, so uh, you can look up variables using this syntax. So for example, init task is the task struct for uh, the idle swapper task. Uh, it prints it out as a structure. And not only can you just print stuff out, you can look at specific members. You can treat the members as if they were the same type in C. So I can get the, I can index into an array. I can do arithmetic on variables. And then I mentioned those helpers before. So uh, you can uh, you can go look at the long list of helpers on the on the Dragon documentation. But uh, one of the helpers we have is for each task, which lets you loop over every task struct in the in the kernel. And let's actually look for a specific task. So I'm just going to start a, a cat process over here. Um, so um, I can get the string uh, representation of the command line for this task. Then I can see if I found the task I'm looking for, which is the cat process. Uh, then let's just print something out to let us know that we found it and break, and we can look for something else inside of that task. So we found that task. Now we have it available here. Uh, and we can do something like get its current stack trace. So this prints a file, including inline functions and uh, line numbers and everything. And you can also look at specific frames. So frame 10 is this frame for VFS read. In, so we can get a little more information about it. But more interesting is that we can 
ask for what local variables and parameters are available in that stack frame. And then I can look at a specific local variable if I want to. So for example, this is the file that cat is trying to read from, which is if we look at some of the, some of its members, we'll see TTY pops. So it's trying to read from the TTY. So um, that's kind of the, the, the quick introduction to Dragon. Uh, you can see how you can build much more complicated things on top of this. Uh, there's, we have a collection of con contributed scripts, which are just like people's debugging sessions that they, that they threw into the Dragon repository in perpetuity. And you can take a look at those or the Dragon helpers themselves. Um, but everything I just showed you is read only. So you can read any memory from the, from the either your live kernel or from a core dump. Um, but in the, in the live kernel case, uh, users have, asked, have been asking me for this for a while uh, to have read write type features. So being able to overwrite the value of a variable or, uh, or much more powerful is being able to set breakpoints and like pause at certain places and then look at your local variables, stuff like that. Uh, and you can definitely see how this makes sense for like development workflows. So um, you could be, you could have your kernel running in QEMU. Uh, you could attach to it uh, over the GDB stub interface it provides. And it would be really nice for Dragon to be able to uh, basically control the, the stopping and starting of the different threads on there. And, and uh, as you're like writing whatever new feature, you mess something up and you just want to do a quick, like, oh, let me just set this variable and see what happens just, to, just for uh, debugging purposes. Um, that's like standard feature in, in user space debuggers. So that would be really nice for, for Dragon. Um, so I have a couple of ideas for what the, the API would look like. So for memory writing, uh, the, the general idea is at the most basic level, you can just have a byte buffer and you can write it to an address. Um, and it's up to you to figure out where that address is. Uh, and how you want to marshal your data into, into it. But then on top of that, there's slightly nicer, more user-friendly way that we could do it, which is get some objects. So for example, uh, we could get the user struct for UID zero and get some member of it that we want to overwrite. So lock VM, I think is an atomic long T in user struct. Uh, so it's actual value is encounter and we could just say overwrite it with this value. Uh, and then Dragon will take care of like uh, turning that into the 64-bit signed integer and writing that to the address of counter for you. Um, so a little less error prone. And we could even do uh, more complicated types like structures. You could give it to us as a dictionary. We can turn it into the byte buffer and then write that. Um, so that's... That's what I envision the API looking like, up for debate because I haven't implemented it, but that's the general idea. Breakpoints are a little more complicated, uh, but not too much. So there are a few ways you might want to set a breakpoint, uh, either by address or uh, by a function name. You could even do a, fun a function name plus an offset since that tends to be more stable than addresses. Uh, or uh, probably the most user-friendly way that people are, are used to from user space debuggers is just give me a file name and a line number, Dragon will figure out where that is and, and uh, set the breakpoint. And then um, this, is, this is like at its core, it's, a, it's kind of a synchronous event thing that can happen. Like a, you set a breakpoint, at some point a thread may or may not hit it. So the API would probably look something like uh, wait for the next event to happen that event gives you some way to get the information about the thread that that uh, hit the breakpoint, uh, whether it's a stack trace or local variable that you want to get, and then you can send the thread on its way uh, and wait for the next one. Um, there, there could be other events that we could handle, whether it's a thread panicking or um, this, this would also map to user space use cases of like setting uh, ptrace events of like threads exiting. But uh, that's, that's the general idea. This is, this is more or less what I imagine that the API would look like. 
Uh, again, uh, let me know if, if you have different ideas of what you think would be easier to use or, um, or other use cases that wouldn't be covered by this. Yeah. Often when I care about like breakpoints, I only want to know when a function is being called from some other function. So like a really common function that, you know, I have part of the path and I need to know the rest. Mm. Okay. So the easiest way to do that, that would not necessarily require extending this API is you go ahead and get the stack trace and you check yourself. Was I called from this function that I'm interested in? And if not, just resume it immediately. Um, Boris has a question. Uh, watch points. Oh, so for like memory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that would definitely be useful as well. And I guess that would probably just be another method on prog prog dot set watch point of your address. We could probably accept a, uh, an object as well, and we'll just do it for you. Um, and then it'll just be another event that that you uh, that you can get from prog dot like get event, I guess. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so the nice thing about this being programmable is like there's a bunch of use cases that would be covered just by using the regular Dragon APIs uh, uh, to like filter stuff out. And then if if there are if something becomes popular enough or common enough of a case, we can probably add a fast path for it that like I don't know uses BPF to filter it out before it gets to the breakpoint or something like that, uh, which would be faster. So thank you for those suggestions. Yep. Have you considered using this for error injection to, in order for testing? For error injection. So that you could test use cases that normally don't get hit and only occasionally trigger them, not every time you hit the breakpoint. Yeah, so I guess you could set a breakpoint on like the return instruction, clobber RAX and say, here's your error. Yeah, um, so I guess that's something that is not covered by this, which is, uh, overwriting registers. So I hadn't considered that, but <laughs> that's a good, that's a good idea. Cool. All right. Cool. Uh, so if that's it, I'll move on to why we want to do this in production. So like I mentioned, this is, this is obviously a useful feature for development. No one's going to get mad about that. Uh, lots of people have been asking for it. Uh, but at Meta, we've, we've had a few cases, probably more than a few, where we've run into a kernel bug and we've come up with like, whether we've come up with the, the correct fix or not, we know that if we could just overwrite this piece of memory, we could, we could, like, uh, we could mitigate this bug long enough for like, the, the team that's being affected by it to, to be able to like, go back to sleep because um, they were woken up in the middle of the night or whatever. Uh, so. There, are, you could imagine reference reference counts that leaks uh, because you forgot to handle some error case, and now something is stuck because you're not trying because uh, the reference count isn't going to zero. Uh, counting overflows or underflows. Now you have some like negative number in in some accounting path, like the locked VM thing I showed earlier, um, and you just want to be able to fix it. Um, so, to give a concrete example. We had an embarrassing bug in ButterFS a couple months ago uh, where a, we thought we were enabling the, our asynchronous discard mount option, uh, but it, it turned out that we weren't enabling it all the way. We, we, set, the, we set the mount option flag, uh, or, or we were setting the mount option correctly like in our configuration in, in FS tab. Um, ButterFS was parsing it, and we were setting a bit in the in the file system information that says we set this mount option flag, and we thought we were doing great. And then suddenly we start getting reports of like our disks are are really slow now. Like, uh, what's going on? And we go look at some metrics, and eventually we figure out we haven't been discarding anything. Um, so after some heroic debugging. Uh, some of the people on my team figured out we 
didn't we set the bit that said the mount option was set, but we didn't set the bit that actually tells Butterfess to issue discards. And like I said, that, that was really embarrassing. Uh, it turned out to be a, a case where uh, when you were remounting a file system from read only to read write, uh, we weren't doing that second part where we say, uh, okay, uh, discards are enabled set that bit. So the fix was was obviously to fix the kernel to handle this read only mount to read write mount transition and actually set the bit. But uh, in the meantime, uh, we could have just deployed or we could have just run a dragon script on, on the affected systems that would have set that bit manually and, and that would have worked fine. Um, obviously there are a lot of caveats with doing this in production. You have to be very careful about what you're overwriting. Um, and when you're overwriting it, because like race conditions are definitely a thing. And it's not meant as a replacement for a live patch. It's more of like, before you go about, before you get the live patch uh, built and deployed and everything, just do this one quick thing. And obviously the, the correct thing is get your live patch out, get your actual kernel update out. Uh, but in the meantime, we can do this. So hopefully that, that explains why I want to do this. Um, so now the, the tricky part is like all the crazy reasons or all the crazy ways we might be able to do this. So for development, uh, the answer is easy. It's just uh, do it over the GDB stub that QEMU, QEMU provides. Um, but there's a bunch of different ways we could do it for production systems. And this is what I mostly wanted to get people's ideas about. So. I'll list a few of the ones that I came up with so far uh, and that I've brainstormed with people leading up to this. So this first one is almost a joke. Uh, bring back Dev KBEM. <laughs> I don't know, there was an LWN article early, I don't know if I remember if it was this year or last year about uh, celebrating that we finally got rid of it, right? <laughs> so uh, Dev KBEM, for the, those who aren't familiar, was uh, basically a, a virtual file where the the offset was uh, a virtual address in the kernel. You could read any memory from it and you could also write any memory to it. Um, and it was basically this beautiful thing for rootkits. Uh, <laughs> and Dragon is not a rootkit, but it has some things that might be akin to a rootkit. Uh, and anything you make easier for debuggers also makes it easier for exploits. But um, Anyways, that is the most straightforward way to support this, but I don't think anyone is going to accept that patch. Um, so alternative is a custom kernel module, which is basically dev KMEM, uh, which is not that much better, but um, <laughs> dev crash, yeah, yep. Um, but at, at, its, at its core, like, at some, you, you need to expose some way that's just like write this arbitrary address uh, with this arbitrary contents. And I think the trick will be providing this, but getting the access controls on it right. Um, so I'll get to that in a second. But uh, the, the other potential way to do this is integrating with KGDB. Uh, so we don't have KGDB enabled in our production kernels, but. Uh, it's not the worst thing we could do. Um, so KGDB could be used for memory writing and for breakpoints that already, it, uh, it's, it's kind of the back end for the GDB stub. Um, so it already supports these operations. The tricky thing is it, it was never intended or designed to be used from a live system as it was running. Um, as far as I can tell, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I sat and tried with this for a little while and uh, I couldn't get KGDB set up in a way that it would just let the system keep running while it would, while I had like set breakpoints or was trying to write memory or anything. You set a breakpoint and it stops every CPU. So you can't be running Dragon at the same time that you're in this breakpoint. So maybe it would be possible to, to fix that or rather extend that to, uh, only stop a certain CPU and let the other CPUs go ahead and, and run Dragon. Um, another idea is uh, doing this with BPF. 
This is a question mark because it kind of goes against everything BPF believes in, which is that uh, your program should be safe. Um, so why is using KGDB a bad idea if it stops all the CPUs? Isn't that the whole point of KGDB? I mean, you would, you would be able to then probe and do things in an atomic sort of way. You don't want to have other CPUs messing with the state while you're looking at it through KGDB. Yeah, so that makes sense for, for the case where I have another machine that is debugging this machine, uh, like the, the virtual machine case. Uh, but I want to be able to, or we need to be able to run Dragon on the same machine that we're currently debugging. Like the, the, the straightforward interface is, let me start Dragon, just do this prog dot write whatever, uh, and it overwrites the memory of the kernel I'm running right now. Um, so that's why Dragon is running in user space. It doesn't have any any special permissions that lets it go on what KG, KGDB is going. So we can't have everything blocked. We at least need Dragon to be able to do its thing. Yep. For me, the question is when you are keep running Dragon on the same kernel that's you know being breakpointed at some function, mm -hmm. how do you guarantee that Dragon doesn't call this function as well? Yeah, and then get stuck as well. So it's sort of chicken and egg problem, yeah. I believe. So that's why this... I think we're back to having a second machine, though. All right. Yeah. That's why this is difficult. Um... <laughs> <laughs> no, so, it's not. I mean, that's how you normally use KGDB, isn't it? That that is how you normally use KGDB. Yes, but uh, and we could probably get away with it uh, on our machines over like the out of band uh, thing, uh, but. Like I said, I'm hoping to have a way to just do this from the local machine. Uh, so the to get back to what Philip said, bullet point here that the idea I had for that is um, have a watchdog that basically bails you out if you if you deadlock. So like if if the kernel is in a breakpoint and then Dragon gets into that same breakpoint and it gets stuck for too long. The watchdog sends an NMI or something and says, sorry, your breakpoint got canceled. Just keep going. That's the best I could come up with for that. But yeah. Did you have another question? Um, no, just another question. Have you considered something like K probes? Then you don't have maybe the full control on where to use breakpoint, but at least a function start and function exit. Yeah. And actually, you, I thought you could set some K probes at arbitrary addresses. Yeah. So that could. So cake probes gives you a way to like hook into into an uh, address and do the breakpoint. And I guess at that point we would probably still need the a kernel module that implements the like call out to dragon and let it know that you hit a breakpoint, right? And then you could still do the watchdog thing. So yeah, that's a good idea. So another wrinkle with this is that um, lockdown is intended to prevent that, which I assume is enabled in a lot of production kernels. Um, so it's meant to prevent any unauthorized changes to the running kernel, even by cap sys sysadmin, cap sys module. Mm -hmm. um, I, I see you have keyring down there, so maybe you're getting to it, but I just wonder if you had any ideas about working around lockdown or working with lockdown. I would probably say if it's locked down, we just wouldn't do it. I, I think it, it probably would, would be frowned upon to try to work around it in any way. And, and in theory, it shouldn't let me do it in any way, right? Yeah. So, so you just mentioned access control. So uh, one observation is in most cases, anything that Dragon would let you do with these like terrible ideas would be um, you could just do by loading a, ma a module manually anyways. So perhaps we should, Dragon should just let you do whatever you, or maybe not Dragon, but the underlying mechanism, perhaps it's good enough for uh, it to be controlled by Capsis admin and, or Capsis module. With the caveat that uh, some, some people run with uh, mandatory module signing. So Capsis module is not necessarily enough for you to be able to load an arbitrary module in. So there's that caveat, and there's a caveat of like the part of the reason people hated the KMEM is that it made it too easy for like any anyone that uh, happened to get root to be able to own the whole system. Um, 
So <clears throat> that's why I'm thinking that the capabilities might not be enough. And my very big bullet point of key ring is like, maybe we need some mechanism for whether, whether it's the custom kernel module or whether it's adding this access control to KGDB, uh, what, whatever the, the underlying mechanism is, we might need a way to say, uh, the user that's running Dragon authenticates that not only my root, but I'm like special kernel team root that is actually, that actually has permission to do this. Um, and kernel keyring or some other module site or some other like signing thing might work for that. Does anyone have anything, any better ideas than that? Sorry, it's probably not a better idea. It was just a, uh, a what about, uh, and you, you might encounter some issues in terms of Dragon uh, or Python just loading code, right? Because there's so many pieces of code that can get loaded by Python. And if you wanted to really be confident that this is safe to do, right, then you'd want to validate all the code that gets ingested by the Python interpreter to make sure it was what you intended. Otherwise, you know, there's no reason I couldn't have put, you know, a dummy module in your, in your Python path that's decided to do something bad. <laughs> yeah, so that, that kind of ties into um, <laughs> Boris and Song's FS Verity and uh, BPFLSM thing. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that's why I kind of copped out and made it like a per user authentication thing. And like, user has to, has to be careful about this, but like we saw how that, where that gets us with like suet binaries. So. So the other option instead of like, you know, full on breakpoints is to define the limited set of things you can do when the breakpoint triggers and turn that into a BPF or a K probe or something like that. So you'd have to write code that you then insert, but you wouldn't have to stop the code. Mm. So the limited thing, set of things that you can do is still like write kernel memory, right? So, so that still needs to like get through. We still need to convince someone that like a, for some BPF programs that are loaded by, or that are controlled in some way by like Kiri, whatever, uh, they can do this. It doesn't change security, it just changes the stopping machine. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about stopping. Sorry, it doesn't change the security part. It just changes the complexity of stopping the CPUs. Right, yeah. So then you don't need to actually uh, worry about this deadlock <laughs> with your own breakpoint problem. We are, oh, we have one question from chat. Yeah. Uh, there's also a comment from the chat. Uh, Maybe Dragon doesn't need to get the full interactive control uh, when the breakpoint is hit, but can it check code at the breakpoint for what it wants to be instead, or wants to do instead? Yeah, yeah, that yeah, makes sense. Like Similar system to what tip. Chris suggested, yeah. Yeah. so that makes sense. Cool. Uh, we are we're at time, but if you wanted to wrap up quickly, another minute or two. Yeah, I'm, that's pretty much all I had. So, I guess. Uh, I still have more questions and answers, but uh, come find me later, and uh, I, I can uh, and we can talk about some more bad ideas, or I can just show you cool dragon stuff. <laughs>